it doesn't really matter. Yeah, yeah it doesn't matter. You can just go ahead and renew it, and you got the 60 days. And you want to terminate it. Same difference. We want to change that, or just keep it at three additional months. I, I would do three additional months. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Um, was this uh, that man that was mentioned earlier about being higher wage than? Yeah. <coughs> okay, and. Um, so what you're doing here is you're approving a contract to, to keep a guy at a higher wage. Is that because we can't find Yeah, we, we did that a couple months ago. I yeah, we, we put it out for bids, and we had two bids. Yes. We had two bids, and uh, one was a lot higher, and this was the lower, lower of them. And yet and, it's, uh, it's more than what we were, were it's, at. It's more than what we were, had before, and our service is considerably different. How's that? What do you mean by different? <laughs> Less. How's that? Less. Less. We're not, we're, we don't get the service that we have previously. It's, 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 it's not what we were used to. Um, so is this an effort to limit the time before we might be forced to put a line, take a line for a year? No. no. There's not people knocking down our door wanting to do that job. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? How you both? Dave? Yes. Doug? Yes. Zach? Yes. Public comment will be permitted after each motion placed on the agenda. Old business. The Planning Commission has two vacancies, two-year replacing <coughs> Keith Key Small, four-year replacing Cody Pasquarello. Four letters of interest were, were received. Mike Smith, Ed Shingle, Jeff Dittmer, and Doug Teagarden. <laughs> motion to appoint, we'll do the two year first. Motion to appoint a two year position. I move to appoint uh, Doug T. Gordon to the two year term. No, second it. Excuse me, isn't that a conflict of interest? You're allowed to do that? Yes. <clears throat> Any other questions? How do you vote? Dave? Yes. Doug? I'm staying. Zach? Yes. Does the public have no say in this other than commentary? Public, or uh, you can just, just, you, just as a point of information, uh, Mr. Stout held a position on the Planning Commission for many years. Mr. Fiddler, back in the back back here, had held a position on the Planning Commission for many years. Uh, 20 years ago, I served on the Planning Commission, I don't know, six or eight months. Not, not uncommon to have one supervisor as a liaison. That's probably an unusual item. Conflict of interest is permitted by the code. You can have one. With a five, with a uh, a three-member board of supervisors, you can have one. When you go to a five-member board of supervisors, you can go to two. Correct, Mike? Yeah. Which was that for the two-year or four-year guys? Two-year. Two-year. Two year. Two year. Motion for the four-year. I move to point Jeff Dittmer for the four-year term to the Planning Commission. I second it. Any questions? I got a question. So, J.D., would, would you guys base the, uh, you had four applicants, you said? Yeah, four applicants. Okay. You, you read your resumes, you, did they submit the resumes, what do you base uh, we have very, the selection on? We have very simple letters is what we have. One, usually one or two sentences is all most of them. No, what is your criteria for making a selection? But nobody submitted the resumes, what you're saying? No, there are no, no resumes. resumes. No resumes. <laughs> what was your method of making a selection? What is the criteria you look at in order to make a selection? We can only appoint two. Okay. I'm sorry? I said we can only appoint two. Uh, that's not my question. What is it that you use to discern who you will select for a position? <coughs> did you or did you not, Zach, have a lengthy conversation with Mr. Dittmer? I did. Okay. Okay, that's one. There were, there were two others. I, I also spoke with Mr. Dittmer at one of these <laughs> meetings, uh, the Planning Commission meeting. He was present, and we had a lengthy discussion. About in fact about Delashawn Road and and Lyons Road. And, and uh, okay, fine. But there were two others, letter, two other letters. Yeah, and, and those and, the, and those folks are both candidates for office, and I don't think it's an appropriate time to appoint 
Uh, point to people that are candidates. Well, you just, wait a minute. You asked for, you wait a minute. Asked, you asked for a reason. Really? You asked for my reasoning. I'm giving it to you. You don't have to like it, but I, I'm giving it to you. And, and, all the, and all the and all the times before that when you didn't appoint them, that was because they wasn't running for office. They weren't running for office. Go ahead, JD. Okay. I, I was fine until you said that, Doug. <laughs> I'm not, you're not going to be it with the JD. I, I'm not. You know, okay, I've got the floor. You guys Doug, can, I have the floor. We are interrupting. You come in asking for, you want to raise fuss. Listen you're not going to get it out of me, okay? I'm not. I'm just telling I'm you. just saying, I was fine with it. But your point you just made was that the other two applicants are running for a supervisor. They are candidates to be a supervisor. They are not supervisors, but yet you're okay. And they're okay with pointing you that you already are our supervisor. So your reasoning is that you don't think it's appropriate. No. Let me let me finish. You don't think it's appropriate for two people that are candidates that I know at least one sitting in this room is better qualified than either of the two you pointed that has a lengthy resume of construction background, licensed electrician, plumber, whatever. So a very qualified candidate, and you're saying because they are candidates for a supervisor position, which you hold, you don't think it's appropriate, but you think it's appropriate for you to take it, even though you have a full-time job and full-time supervisor, that you don't have enough on your plate. So I would say, I was fine until you said that. I would have to object based on that. You can object that. all you like, J.D. That's not unusual. Call for a vote. Somebody needs to. Dave, how do you vote? Yes. Doug T. Garden. Yes. Zach Restaurant. Yes. Mm -hmm. he, he can't vote. He can't vote. Absolutely. On that one, on that one, you can't. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought it was on both of them. No, that's what I'm separating. On November 11, 2015, on November 11, 2015, the minutes read that commercial sewage increase was 1.5 per thousand gallons beginning January 2016 bringing the total for commercial sewage to $9 per thousand gallons. The commercial sewage increase was reported incorrectly. The correct increase should have been reported as commercial sewage for $2.50 a thousand gallons. Motion to amend the minutes of November 11, 2015 to state that the commercial sewage increase was $2.50 per thousand gallons bringing the total commercial sewage to $9 a thousand gallons. I would move that, that we make that amendment and attach the statement from Mr. Bibby uh, to the minutes. Second. Any questions? Good Mike. You don't actually go in and change it. You actually just put, we'll just put, a, put an amendment. addition Yes. In. Yeah. They'll both be there. Yeah. Tammy? Okay, the, I guess the question would be is, um, you're going to change that, however, the question was asked, when did you ever make a decision to do commercial rates? We had commercial rates at that time. There were commercial rates at this time. I believe there was commercial rates at that time. We can back and look. We'll see what documentation we have. Any other questions? Good, JD. Did you get an answer? No. <laughs> she don't have that information here. We'll we'll look at we'll see what we can, can can pull up. But she asked that question at the last meeting. This is not. We'll look up. We got information. You know, we didn't have the list of her questions. She didn't give us a list of what she presented at the last meeting. She didn't, but, you didn't, you didn't write them down. But this yeah. this this motion you're making was brought to light. And we're we got we're by making. Tammy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So just yeah. since you can't vote on it, that was never put in. Yeah. You can't vote on this. If you yeah, can't we, prove, we can. Yeah, you can't we, prove that the other was actually. Yeah, we can prove that's that's the, the rate that he that he recommended. But him recommending doesn't mean that you actually made a motion to create well, I, that somebody I, I, I made a motion. That we did. 
Belief and proof are separate. Okay, we'll, we'll have to research that. The, the question is, she brought up this question at the last meeting, and it's on the agenda. And if you can't answer the question when it was done, there was obviously a serious mistake. And this is being, this is going to be audited by the CPA, and we'll have answers, okay? I mean, you're welcome to come in and go through the records like we have. I, I we, have. we did. We'll do it. Come in and look at them. They're, they're here. They're your records. Okay. Call for vote. We, she already did, and if she didn't get an answer, I'm not going to get an answer. Yes. Doug T. Garden. Yes. Zach Prescott. Yes. Uh, previously tabled items, none. New business. Uh, Planning Commission recommended approval for Dave Ely's setback variance of 15 feet at 130 Shaler Road. Motion to approve the setback variance for Dave Ely at 130 Shaler Road. I'll also move. I'll second. Any questions? How you vote? Dave, Jay, did you get it figured out from last meeting? What, where the... Oh, the, we'll uh, get the solicitor's opinion. He's here. No, I'm just saying, did you, because there was question at the meeting whether it was... Uh, I don't think there was any question there. The, the plans was approved. I, I understand that. I think you were at that meeting. There was a yeah, question was because they first said they measured 30 feet from the I edge understand that. 30 feet from the center and, of the road. And, and they got the wording. Yeah, we... I think it's from the edge of the right away. This way. Yeah, but Gary, what you, was were, the, what you weren't was at that meeting. I would talk to Michael. Crooney, my associate. Yeah, he was there. And he said that issue was, do you measure from the center line or do you measure from the mm -hmm. right away? That was a lot of the discussion, I think. Mm -hmm. right. And we I think the decision that was made was the, you measure, measure from the edge of the right away. Uh, Lee, didn't you guys have some writing in your minutes on that? Yeah, we did. And we have We really don't have a definitive answer to that. Uh, and I know is, uh, our UCC is looking into that. He has gone back to it. But it's my understanding we have to go by PennDOT regulations. We don't have any zoning regulations. It'd be on state road, it'd be by PennDOT. It's no, not on state road. It has to go by PennDOT. We have to go to state regulations since we don't have our own zoning regulations, which is specific about whether we measure from the edge of the road or from the center of the road. It reverts back to the higher and it goes to PennDOT. And we haven't heard back yet as they measure from the center of the road or from the edge yet. It's still up in the air. But the end result will still be the same. Still be the same. If you measure from the edge of the right away, that's that's obviously the safest mm -hmm. way to measure. And then the code enforcement officer was out and wrote a uh, he wrote his uh, take on it and he suggested approval of it as as it was shown to him. And, and it, again, Dave, as I stated last night, I have no problem with. with Build it how you want it, whatever. I'm not contesting that law. Just that if you're making an exception, especially in your case, since you're sitting on the board, that it should be correct and done right. And there was some confusion at that meeting, and it sounds like there's still not clarity on it. So, I was just so stating it should make sure you get it right so you don't cause a problem down the road. Edge of the right of way. What's what's your definition of edge of the right of way? Well, on Township Roads, it's the right of way is 16, 16 and a half feet from the measure from the center line. That's the edge of the right. All right, well, from the center of the road, I'm 42 feet on the one corner, and I'm 38 feet on the other corner from the center of the road. From the center of the road. From the center of the road. So you take off 16 mm -hmm. and a half feet from right. Right. And you were requesting a variance, and, and that's what the Planning Commission approved. Yes. No, actually, we didn't because no. Michael said it wasn't a lot of be a variance. variance. Yeah. He said it had to be. Uh, they don't call it a variance. They call it a different a waiver. A no. modification. 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 But Gary, what the, what the can what what the problem was that night is we asked and Lee measured it one way, Dave measured another, or there was somebody else involved, or maybe the code enforcement officer, and the the code says from he had it right away. So I I believe it was. Whatever it says in the book was 50 feet or? Again, it wasn't what? clear. In the book, it didn't specifically say for the edge from the center of the road. That was the question. Was the Donegal codes didn't say specifically which way to measure it. And that's why I'm waiting to hear back from Doug from the UCC to figure out what's the correct me measurement is. He's I discussed it. He thought it was a good dog. They were really from the center of the room.
If you got a 33 foot right away, the second class township code is 33 feet is a right away in, in a second class township. And the code says it's a 50 foot setback. From the edge of the right away. It doesn't say from the edge of the right away. So you have to go 16 and a half feet from the center of the road to find the edge, and then your setback would be 50 feet. But in this township, isn't there above the road and a below the yes. road? Yes, yep, there's that too. What happens when you're on the flat of the road? That's, that's what we're working, working with. It's flat of the road. Because Down in the Tuttle Street, we're working with below the road, which made it only 35 foot setback. So the code says from the ultimate right of way is the verbiage in the code, if I'm not mistaken. And that is whatever the ultimate right of way is. So the ultimate right of way is 33 feet. You start at the edge of 33 feet. I mean, it, there's, it's yeah. the same thing. It's just a different way of saying it. It's all right. You find the center of the road. You start from the center. You measure out 16 and a half feet. Right. And they're, but they're saying instead of measuring from the center, yeah. you find both edges, and the, and the setback begins at the edge of the right. But it's not the point. You got all the, everybody approved everything, correct? So let's go with it. Mr. McAdoo. How, how, how many setback variances does that have to deny? Uh, variances. Up and up and down on that dead end street back And the main reason for denying it would be safety, line of sight. Right. That's, and that's in a residential neighborhood. Yeah. We have a motion on the floor. Um, yes. You got your on on your yeah on your on your something on your map. Right? You have the vague was drawn on there. I'll have a map. Oh, we didn't you have didn't you have something at the draw? You had a draw right there. Um, how soon do you want to build? Middle of June? You can have the next meeting, you can have a straw. Yeah. Continue meeting. Continue meeting. Yeah. Yeah. I'll withdraw the motion. Yeah, I'll make the motion to the table. Make the motion to the table next to uh, the continued meeting. There we go. the drawing. Yeah, but if you can get an answer for Monday. Yeah, he'll get an answer. He'll, he'll give us a map of the drawing. If no one will require drawing from everybody we grant. I'll get over to Doug. Wilkie can or Wilkie contracting has submitted road bonding application to Hall. We, we, we need to have Hall, oh, yeah. Table. Table not approved. Any questions? Table. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Wilkie Contracting has submitted a road bonding application to Hall and cut on Ebert for Columbia Pipeline Group. All paperwork and checks are included. Motion to approve the road bonding application as presented. Okay, we have, I move to be approved. I'll sign. Here we've got a check from uh, Keystone Consultants for $300. We have a check from We'll be contracting for twenty-five thousand dollars, and another check from Wilkie we'll Contracting for two hundred and fifty dollars, and the application is here. So. You made a motion. Yeah. Any second. Yeah. Any questions? How you vote? Dave. Yes. Doug. Yes. Zach. Yes. Tunnel Ridge has submitted a route bonding application to Hall on Old National Plate. All paperwork and checks are included. Move to approve. Sorry. Any yeah. questions? We have a, the application is a $3,000 check and a $250 check. What are they hauling, Dave? Let's see what it says here. One of the water, out of the water. One of the listed contractors on here. Another one, the uh, Richland excavating, probably digging equipment. I don't know who LJ uh, used and Sons. Where are they? Where are they going? Where are they going? 
Don't you uh, already old, have Waynesburg bonded? It's old National Road. Uh, <laughs> five, five miles. You know where the start and stop is at the end? I think they're coming off the Glades Wax and coming out the Waynesburg Road. Yeah. That would be about right. What about Waynesburg? Is it long Waynesburg? Is it one for Waynesburg? We do. I it's already in place. I, I believe it, it is. I can go look. Yeah, I think, I think it's one of the ones. Yeah, they have that one in no, place for Waynesburg. So uh, down to the bridge? Yeah, down to the cover bridge. Any other questions? How you vote? Dave? Yes. Doug? Yes. Zach? Yes. David Roselli, we have been in a lease with the township for the purpose of providing cost saving and road repair activities using the location of 130 Shaler Road as a staging area for parking and storage of township equipment, stone and pile, stone and pipe to be used on various roads within the township. Mr. Mr. Ely, Mr. and Mrs. Ely would like to terminate the lease of the township at 130 Shaler Road, West Alexander. Motion to terminate the lease. Move to terminate. Sorry. Any questions? How you vote? Dave? Yes. Doug? Yeah. Zach? Yes. You're abstaining, right? I wasn't going to. Should I abstain? Because. No, he's not abstaining. Okay. okay. Not to get. Um, additional. I don't, or additions, additions to the agenda. Any? Hey Dave, did you guys ever pass the motion to fix to have the uh, engineer go? I don't, I don't remember hearing that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, we didn't. It was on motion. It was a direct. Oh, okay. But, yeah. He, uh, said, he said he would talk. He had a conversation with right? Yeah. Yeah. Correspondence. Okay. Not quite as much as we've been having. Um, there is an application for an on-lot uh, sewage disposal system permit uh, for the Thomas Martin Company at 130 Crane Road, signed by Ethan Ward. A email from Larry Maggi, County Commissioner, in regards to the a uh, proposed partnership on Dutch Fork Lake. Peace afternoon bulletin, earth disturbance inspection report, uh, Gibraltar uh, pipeline project, this is from Commonwealth of Pennsylvania DEP, and uh, it came out and uh, did an earth uh, disturbance uh, inspection report and found some items that they failed. This is uh, from PennDOT on westbound nighttime lane re restrictions on I-70. This is from Claysville Borough and Donegal Township Joint Municipal uh, Planning Committee, and there's a copy of their annual uh, report. It's worth reading. It was interesting. Uh, advertisement for bids on the. Uh, somebody want to shut that door, please? Thank you. Um, advertisement for bids on um, new equipment storage building. Uh, this is from Range Resources, the Emma Joe Brees unit. Must be in, I guess, by Buffalo Township. Uh, Redevelopment Authority of Washington County um, regarding the block grant program and, and it's whether or not it's going to be here or not. Uh, this is a compliance notice from Washington County Conservation District, uh, Columbia Gibraltar, Buffalo Creek Pipeline Project. Notification of some issues. Another compliance notice from the Washington County Conservation District, uh, Columbia Gibraltar, on the pipeline project in Donegal, West Finley, and Buffalo Townships, and there's some compliance issues. Pennsylvania American Water Company, notice of proposed water rate increase. HMT, um, engineers are going into business to sold out to somebody else, I guess. They got new owners. Um, email from our range resources. Give us a heads up. They plan on uh, erecting the AST out on Phillips tank pad. 
around May 20th. Consol Energy regarding uh, applying for permits from the DEP and they give the uh, locations and I, they're all numeric and I don't, don't recognize them by numbers. There's an application. Um, some proposed changes in Act 13, impact fee language. Washington County Planning Commission on the 2020 uh, decennial census, census program. Uh, GSP management regards the interstate mobile village of an abandonment of a mobile home on lot number 37. A letter from Peacock Keller uh, regarding um, judgment creditor lien holders and other interested persons from First Federal uh, Savings and Loan Association of Green County. It appears like they must be uh, suing or sheriff selling uh, property over here on Route 40. And it tells you all about that. Uh, law offices of Hook and Hook of Waynesburg, Pennsylvania. Motion to continue uh, the, the conciliation conference. And motions court must uh, do with the uh, Washington County Board of Assessment, uh, Guffey School District, and Donegal Township. Uh, email from uh, Buffalo Creek Water uh, Shed Association. Um, and talks about how the drilling industry, uh, drilling uh, operations are affecting the uh, the area under the seminar coming up. And another letter, uh, or I guess it's a copy of a letter we got previously from Guffey School District back in uh, February. Talks about their uh, resolution regarding tax collectors. Uh, we are currently without a tax. Well, we currently have a tax collector, but we may not have one come January 1st. And I was in some uh, conversation last week with Francis King, who said that the county might be open to to collecting our real estate tax if we so approach them, and, and they could do it with their system. So we'll have, something we'll have to look into come next year. That is the uh, correspondence. Approval of the bill list. Motion to approve bills and sign checks. So moved. Sorry. Any questions? How you vote? Dave? Yes. Doug? <coughs> yes. Zach? Yes. Remarks from the supervisors? None at this time. Public comment. If I may. My name is Bob Fisher. For any of you who might not know me, I am involved in Pennsylvania Emergency Management. Uh, I'm starting a community emergency response team for Donegal Township in Claysville Borough. This is under Pennsylvania Emergency Management Agency, Bureau of Strategic Planning, Community Outreach, and Planning Division. It is sponsored by Region 13. Uh, okay, the Community Emergency Response Team is a group of neighbors and friends in a disaster pre preparedness response recovery and mitigation techniques, the team responds to help their neighbors during disaster situations. Anyone can become a CERT member. The team members will train and recognize hazards in the home, workplace, measures necessary to eliminate these, those hazards, learn safety procedures, how and when to use a fire extinguisher and hazardous materials recognition. They will learn disaster medical treatment procedures. They will learn light search and rescue, learn disaster psychology techniques, and learn how to handle situations involving animals in a disaster and learn be taught terrorism <coughs> awareness. They'll also be uh, given, upon completion of a two-day course, a uh, as you can see, you get a vest, a helmet that's a, the both say sir on them, a backpack with various uh, <coughs> itineraries in it, goggles, gloves, uh, to be able to help in a disaster situation. Anyone interested in doing this or joining this, please contact me with your name and phone number, and we'll get back to you on the dates. It's a two-day training. 
statement. Thank you. Um, um, can I ask a question? I, I mean, I'm not sure, but I think that the township has an emergency management program. And no, they don't. If they I stopped today to see the emergency ma management plan. There is none for this township, which puts every man, woman, and child in the township at risk. Okay. All right, there is an emergency management plan. In 2009, it's outdated. We're working on updating it. Um, Chief Ann Kozik, Eric Graham, and myself have had numerous meetings going over the old plan, trying to make updates, and get some corrections made, get some people assigned to key functions. Should there but be a disaster, there's nothing in that office for yes, anybody to go to to use. There's the, there's the 2009 plan. Tammy, is there a 2009 plan on there? There is a 2009 plan. And when, I, when you came in today, I said, give me a minute, and then John came out. You, you did come out, right, and talk. Yes. Yeah, so they are working on it. Yeah, that, that's what and I was told last came summer. In and I, I, I went to look. I, I knew we had nine, but I, I couldn't find the updated one. We don't have it yet. Well, that's, I was told last summer when I asked about it that they were working on it. I think uh, it's high time they should have it done. You know, Doug's been sitting up there for how many years? Same thing with Mr. Ely. Zach's been there for almost a full term. And there's nothing been done since 2009? Uh, when were you appointed as the emergency manager coordinator, Zach? I got the letter when did this yeah, the end of October last year. It, do, it doesn't really matter. You, pe you three yeah. guys are responsible for the safety of the people in this township. You have neglected your duty. Thank you. Mike, do you have your hand up? Yeah. Good. Um, Approximately uh, three weeks ago, I was contacted by uh, Mark Rutte. I don't know if you guys are familiar with him. He's the chairman of the Republican Party. And basically, he just wanted me to let everybody know in the township that I was appointed uh, committee member for Donovan Township. Um, basically, what that does is if you belong to the Republican Party, even if you belong to the Democratic Party, and you have a problem with somebody in the Republican Party, you can contact me and you know, I can help you wade through the paperwork and deal with the party and all.